Hi everyone, I'm Lana Wynn, environmental scientist here at California State Parks in the Orange Coast District. Snowy plovers are small shorebirds that hang out on wide sandy beaches year round. They fit actually in the palm of your hand, that's how small they are. They are gray on top, white on bottom, with little gray legs, and you can often find them near the rack or the kelp that washes up from the ocean. So that's where their favorite food source is, little bugs or invertebrates. You may wonder why we don't groom our beaches at our state parks, and that's because this rack is a really important food source for not only snowy plovers, but many other shorebirds as well. So right now we have a rope and wooden stake fencing that's protecting a snowy plover nest. Uh, snowy plovers like to nest on wide open sandy beaches and their nest is just a little indentation in the sand where they'll lay up to three eggs and they'll incubate them for about 28 days or so at which point they hatch and the chicks need about another 28 days until they are old enough to fly. Um, so what we have done is we put what's called a mini exclosure over the nest which helps protect the nest from predators like crows, ravens, coyotes, even humans and our dogs sometimes, and it gives the snowy plover nest more of a chance to actually hatch and survive, especially because we like to go to the beaches during the same time that snowy plovers need to nest on the beach. The openings are actually large enough that the plover can run in and out as needed, but the cage is big enough that coyotes can't reach in and grab the egg. Uh, ravens and crows can't actually peck the eggs and protects the nest so that it can actually be incubated to its full term. Plovers are little shorebirds, they're very small, and they are easily frightened and chased. If we harass them a little too much, they can actually die and not survive. They have very limited fat reserves, so chasing them too much can actually prevent them from being able to incubate their nest and um, either the bird can die or the nest won't have the temperature regulation that it needs and the eggs won't survive. We need to maintain our distance so the birds can actually do what they need to do to make sure that their nests survive and that the eggs actually hatch. If you see a snowy plover nest or even just any eggs on the sand, what you should do is take a picture and then walk away as quickly as you can so that the adult birds, which are probably nearby, don't think that you're actually taking the eggs. Get as accurate of location data as you possibly can. For example, you could say it's about 100 feet from the fire pits near Tower 2 and that will be really important information that you can then relay to park staff. Any park staff that you see with a patch, you can flag them down, let them know, and then they'll let the appropriate people know. Snowy plovers were listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act in 1993 because we were seeing alarming declines in their numbers up and down the West Coast. Right now, uh, certain parts of Oregon and Southern California, our populations are holding steady, but we're seeing swift declines in other areas, even despite the listing. Our impact to these birds is often through just getting too close and not letting them rest. Um, we like to go to the beach during the times that they are trying to nest on the beach, and that often just is a conflicting use. Some of the predators that snowy plovers have to deal with are crows and ravens, which are attracted to our beaches because of a lot of the trash that we leave on the beaches. So wrappers fly off or you leave a pizza crust or something. That actually attracts these birds, which are scavengers, to come to the beach. They also like to eat snowy plovers and eggs. Another big predator for them are coyotes, which are yet another scavenger drawn to our beaches from trash and just human use. The nests are very susceptible to uh, coyotes coming and eating the eggs. Unfortunately, man's best friend is just like a coyote. They're very closely related and are natural predators to snowy plovers, whether it's through their scent or actual digging up of eggs and smashing of eggs, or even chasing the birds too much.
We here at Huntington and Bolsa Chica State Beaches are actually quite lucky because we get to see snowy plovers year round. When they're not breeding on our beaches, we can often find groups of them or flocks along the rack line or mid beach doing what is called roosting or just resting, hanging out, fattening up for the winter and trying to get ready for the upcoming breeding season. We get flocks of sometimes up to 100 birds here at Huntington and it's really important that we try to not disturb them even in the winter time. We have a very active volunteer docent program that helps us monitor both California leaf terns and western snowy plovers. A great way for you to actually have a direct impact to the birds and help us out in managing these endangered species is to come volunteer for us. We ask that people come and do a shift, basically keeping eyes on the colony and eyes on these birds and just reporting what you see, letting us know what you're finding out there. And coupled with that, you're also doing some outreach and education. So letting the, the park visitor who doesn't know anything about shorebirds, giving them a little bit of background about why these birds are here and why it's so special that they're here right now. So uh, it's a great opportunity. If you guys are interested, you can reach out to us via our social media platforms and we can connect you. Hi, I'm Lana Wynn, environmental scientist for California State Parks for the six coastal units here in Orange County. Thanks for coming and visiting us at our state parks.